against the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Joe Hall has his own outstanding first year man in the giant seven footer Sam Bowie. That's Kentucky's Wildcats the Rebels of the University of Nevada at Las Vegas tomorrow here on NBC tip off at one o'clock. Play by Sealer. Woods, four inches smaller than Burns, so Ron might try to work on him inside, and instead he passes to Seeley, Felton misses, and it comes over to Bob Frost. Griffin, flatten in. So after shooting only 43% in the first half from the floor, Washington's opened up here with some fine shooting thus far in the second half. It's the second time today the Huskies have led by as many as eight. Timeout, 17.33 to go. First half, and Washington up 40 to 32. Half of the teams in the conference this year are hitting more than half of their shots from the field, and Washington one of them. Well, they've started out here in the second half, for all, three for three. Washington playing man-to-man. -man. Oregon playing man-to-man -man all day. And a holding foul on the Huskies in close. It's on James Woods, he's first. First team foul on Washington. 30-year-old Jim Haney. Yeah, if, in case you missed it at the start of the game, we said Marv Harshman has three sons that are all as old or older than Jim Haney. And one of them is an assistant coach at Michigan State. Steely misses, Woods rebounds, Pronk. Collides with Seeley, but no foul. I'm glad there was no call. Yeah, there. I was about to say the same thing. Just no harm done by no the whistle. Right. Didn't have any effect on the game. Stay off each other now. That's Ron no Burns basket. overplaying James Woods, and Burns picks up his second foul. The second on the Ducks here in the second half. Two other finals are in, Lynn. In a meeting of two of the top 20 teams in the country, Clemson defeated North Carolina State this afternoon, 78 to 70, and Wake Forest nipped Georgia Tech, 49-48. Maybe Clemson should uh, start getting more recognition down there in the Atlantic Coast Conference. They got a good one. Foul called on Felton Seeley. Be his third. So here we go again. Oregon getting themselves perhaps in some foul trouble early here in the first half. What happened was that Seeley was kind of out of position that he tried to make up for it when he saw that pass coming. He tried to stop it then, but it was too late. You got to play your hardest defense before your man gets the ball. That's a good rule of thumb. What is the rule of thumb? I've always wondered that. <laughs> Lorenzo Romar. Tough try. Jerome Williams. Goaltending will be called on James Woods. So Jerome Williams has his eighth point now, and it's 40 to 34, Washington. Sixteen and a half minutes to play in Seattle. Ross Porter and Lynn Shackelford with you. Next Saturday, Washington State and USC from Los Angeles. Oregon's really having difficulty, the Oregon players defensively trying to figure out how they should play these Washington players and keep from committing fouls. Jerome Williams just picked up his second. Jim Haney not too happy because the Ducks have four fouls in less than four minutes in the second half. Dan Walker. Williams, good inside position for the rebound. John Murray to Richard Wright. Burns calling for the ball. Goes to Williams instead for a 17-footer. Woods with a rebound. Murray goes down midcourt. Frank just streaks by him, takes it all away, but they're a traveling call. Oh, tough play. Frank really showed some speed there. Big 6'4 guard. The way he's built, you wouldn't think he would have a lot of it. Quite and an athlete, though, Lynn. He was quite a football player. In fact, he went out for the Husky varsity as a quarterback over a year ago in spring training. Spring drills finally decided, no, I'll just concentrate on basketball. Well, you can see the guy's got some athletic skill there. He really turned on the speed that time when a drive to his left. Traveling was the call, though. Williams in close, and he is fouled. Williams is a pretty good offensive player. Yeah, he's got quick moves. He's got long arms. He can, 
He can play inside well. He, he can shoot from the outside. Once he gets the ball in deep, you're almost going to have to foul him because with that quickness, he'll find a way to get a shot around someone. Woods has both of Washington's fouls in the second half. And now Williams to the line. He was over 2 there in the first half. Jones now with nine points. Some of those familiar in the Southern California area are probably be surprised. He's from Mir High School in Pasadena. Most of the best basketball players have come out of Pasadena High School. The other where George Kersey and coached them. Right. Five-point lead. Walker misses, but Woods gets it back and makes it a seven-point advantage. That was just a tough break because the shot came off at an unusual angle, and Woods just happened to be there. It wasn't because he had that great a position. Oregon's leading scorer and rebounder, Mike Clark, who did not start today, is going to go back in when it's dead for Oregon. Richard Wright, the best outside shooter the Ducks have, misses. Underneath, a chance for a three-point play. As Ray Whiting, that yeah. aggressive. Yeah, there's a brilliant play by a freshman. Marv Harshman's not happy with something, either the referee or the play, but watch Whiting. What timing. You just can't really teach this to a basketball player. A guy just comes to your school with that kind of skill. Hang in the air. Stan Walker with his first foul, and now Ray Whiting with a chance to complete the three-point play and pull Oregon back to within four. So Whiting held at two points in the first half, already has five after intermission, and it's 42-38 Washington. Omar, Walker, Franck, Griffin, Woods inside, Walker takes it. 18-footers there. Well, somebody got lost in the shuffle there defensively because they don't want to give Walker that kind of shot from the outside. So there must have been a screen away from the ball that Walker rubbed his man off of. Walker has eight, six of those in the second half. 44-38, right fading away and hitting. Wright had to wait a year to play at Oregon after transferring from Old Dominion. And he cuts the Husky lead to four. Could have been a traveling call. The Oregon bench wanted it. I thought he did travel, yeah, Bob Frum. Looked like it. This is not necessarily the game that Washington would like to play as they get the ball in deep to Woods. They want a little more running. Good offensive rebound by Griffin. And he scored. Griffin's got 12 points, and he didn't start today. 46-40, Washington. Three second violations all in the duck. So even though the style of the game is really not exactly what Marv Harshman would like, he'd like a little bit more running. Jim Haney and his Oregon Ducks are still scrambling and a little bit frustrated, trying to come from behind. They're down by six and trying to stop Washington this time. 13.42 to go in our ball game in Seattle. Murray and Griffin traded elbows. Bronk misses inside, and Jerome Williams pulls it down. Whiting stumbles back out to Jerome Williams. Online. Williams in double figures with 11, and it's 46-42. No one's led by more than eight. Washington's enjoyed that position a couple of times in the game. Oregon led early 8-2. to two. Romar saves it back on the court to Griffin. And the hustle of Romar paid off. Yeah, Griffin's one of those players that when he gets things going in his way, he can hit the offensive boards hard, and he can shoot from the outside, and he's having a good afternoon. Marv Harshman's going to leave him in there for sure. Griffin has 14 points to lead the Huskies. 48-42, wow. Washington on top. Whiting leaves it for White. A right is about a little bit out of his range with that one, 26, 27 feet out. Bob Frank leaves with another rebound. Looks like we've had a lot of exchanges here without too many whistles being blown. Some of the players will probably get tired here in a minute. I'm not used to that so far this afternoon. And the Ducks turn it over. John Gregg going back in for Oregon and Don Vaughn back into the Washington lineup. But first, we've got a timeout. 12.05 to go. 
Washington leads Oregon by six. Join me for a special occasion, the introduction of the ultimate LTD, the elegant new LTD Crown Victoria. Elegant surround. Notice the quiet. The ride is quietly well, you can, as the rolls roll. Mileage, with automatic overdrive option, no competitor's full-size V8 surpasses LTD Crown Victoria's gas mileage rating. You'll be proud to say, mine's the Crown Victoria. Ford, the official cars of the 1980 Winter Olympics. I just discovered oil. Louise, we just discovered oil. People are discovering Texaco's Haviland Supreme, the motor oil with a special friction fighter that's been proven in fuel economy tests. Extensive tests showed that two of the leading 10W40 motor oils advertising extra gasoline mileage couldn't beat Haviland Supreme. And you still get Haviland's trooper-tested engine protection, too. Discover Haviland Supreme, protection plus unbeaten mileage. On NBC's Game of the Week, All-America guard Kyle Macy leads the hard-charging Kentucky Wildcats against the running Rebels of Nevada, Las Vegas, tomorrow. Tomorrow on NBC Sports World, the top women pros challenge Oahu's pounding surf and women's World Cup, Cup surfing and then see full contact karate featuring the WKA championship bout. 12 noon Pacific time, 1 o'clock mountain on NBC. It's been a pretty good year for the road team yep. in the conference. We've won almost half of them. Yeah, we've talked about how Oregon's done pretty well. They've won three out of seven themselves, and some of the other teams have uh, fared well on the road also. Don Vaughn back in the lineup. Gives it to Lorenzo Romar over to Stan Walker. 48-42 Washington. We're under the 12-minute mark in the second half. Griffin on the drive. Rolls it across the rim. Murray took a hard fall. John takes a lot of those in the course of the game. Stolen by Romar, Williams had it back. Who's got it? Williams again. Oh, it's getting rough on the inside. Clark missed. And the ball belongs to Oregon. Yeah, they're really going at it under there. Woo! You know, so there's some of the Oregon fans you're seeing right there. They wanted a whistle blown. They thought their players were fouled. I'm sure the Washington fans would tell you just the opposite. James Woods has got it for the Huskies. And Washington looks like they're in control, even though it's just a six-point lead. They seem to have things going pretty much the way they want them. If they could just get a few more fast-break baskets, I think then Marv Harsman would really be happy. But Oregon will probably try to hang tough. Washington trying to win for the tenth time in the last 15 starts. It goes 16 and 7. They're trying to get the ball into Woods, and they can't. Clark doing a pretty good job of fronting it. Griffin misses. Williams rebounds. Clark. Greg gave him a moving oh, screen. Yeah, it was it was a very effective play by Greg. Clark gets the basket. Greg will not get an assist, but there's an example of a guy getting, really should getting an assist for that screen. Mike Clark went almost 30 minutes before he got his first two points, and he's the Ducks' leading scorer. 48-44 Washington. Woods double teamed by Greg and by Clark, and one of them fouled him. They're called on Clark. It's Mike's third foul. Team foul five on Oregon. And Goodmanson foul. is going to go back in. It must be tough for Woods at 6'8 to be moved back and forth between forward and center. He's a natural forward, yeah, don't you think? Very definitely. Yeah, I really think he probably does not like the idea of playing center, but of course he just wants to play, I'm sure. Now this will change the complexion of the game with big Peter Goodmanson in there. They double team, and the ball is stolen by Clark. He did a good job of fronting Goodmanson. Oregon can come within two with a basket. 10.20 to go. Murray forced his pass, and the Ducks are lucky they kept the ball. I'll say, I I'm surprised that Murray is senior. Haney like wasn't too happy, was he? No, Haney's not happy with that. Murray's usually a very heady player. I'm surprised he threw that pass in there. 48-44 Washington. They let it half 34-30. Murray didn't find the ball, and Vaughn does. Don going the other way over Greg, and blew the layup. Greg intimidated him. He did. I thought Greg was going to go in there and try to make the block, and at the last second, he held off. So it's still a four-point difference. Exactly 10 minutes to play. Williams in close. No basket. There's a foul call on Washington. Andre Griffin has his third foul, and the Huskies' fourth of the half. 
shooting time for, no, they're going to have a common foul. No, no shooting. Now Felton Seeley's going to report back in for Oregon. And Richard Wright will come out. The last time we were tied was 28-28 late in the half. Now it's 48-44, Washington. Oregon sure having a lot of trouble with their passing, especially in close. Maybe Washington's playing some good defense, but maybe Oregon's just trying to force the ball in a little bit too much too often. Maybe they ought to try to hit a few outside shots, try to open it up a little. Washington commits a three-second violation. So this has not been an artistic game. No, with all the turnovers, it sure hasn't. Thirty-six the, turnovers. Wow. And we still got nine and a half minutes to go. Clark travel. Washington is three and three at home this year in Pac-10 play. Oregon three and four on the road, as we told you, but the Ducks have won only one time at Mac Court in seven tries. Unlike an Oregon team. <laughs> yeah, that, that is uh, unusual. They say they haven't shot well at home. Well, they haven't shot well anywhere. They're the worst no. shooting team in the conference, about 44 percent. But they're in this ball game down sure. only 48-44. Yeah, you would think that the team that's going to win this game is going to have one really good spurt where they eliminate turnovers, where they make a couple good shots, and maybe hit about oh six to eight points in a row, and that might be the difference. Seeley forced it. Comes to Williams on a ricochet. Good defense by Washington. Oregon executed a play fairly well, and Washington had everything stopped. Here's Murray, and it's a two-point ball game. Hard shot by little Murray because he had to shoot really over the outstretched hand of Goodmanson. I don't think he had a really good vision of the basket. 48-46 with 8.20 to go at Seattle. Romar to Walker to Goodmanson. Oh, big rebound and a big two-pointer for Stan Walker. It's the seventh straight time Walker's been in double figures in the game. 17 of his last 19, and he's had eight of those 10 here in the second half. 50 to 46. Washington keeps the lead. Clark double pumps and scores over Goodmanson. I think that's what Oregon's going to have to start doing is going into Clark or whoever the center is that Goodmanson is guarding because his uh, defensive play is certainly not as good as he is offensively. 50 to 48. Romar to Walker. Whoa. Way outside, barely grazed the rim with it, but the Huskies keep it. Bob Bronx going back in for Washington, but first we have a timeout. 7.35 to play. It is Washington 50, Oregon 48. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hey, where you been? Well, it wasn't easy getting tickets for this just game. Just did that. exactly what I wanted. Biggest steak you've got in a bottle of Lowen Brown. Steak in Lowen Brown. Dolan, you're a genius. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be Lowen Brown. Here's to the chef. Here's to the bartender. People would rather buy their life insurance from somebody they know and trust. That's why so many families are coming to state farm agents for their life insurance. Usually they have other kinds of insurance with us. We see them on a regular basis and we know their needs pretty well. And that makes it a lot easier to put together a life insurance program that's really tailored to their needs. That's life insurance, the state farm one. On Sports World, black belts battle it out in bone-jarring full-contact karate. Plus, top pros challenge Oahu's pounding serve in the Women's World Cup Sunday. 
Washington State's Cougars who figure to be in either the NCAA or the NIT will be on our telecast next Saturday against the USC Trojans from Los Angeles. We'll be on the air at 3.30 Pacific, 4.30 Mountain. And how about that Brian Rice in the Washington State, Lynn? Set a Pac-10 record Thursday night when he sank 23 free throws against this Oregon team in 25 attempts. Boy, that's going to the line. Yeah, he, he knows how to get to the line, that little guy. Washington leading right here over Oregon by two, and again, the Huskies will inbound it. 7.33 to go in the ballgame, and Marv Harshman a little bit anxious. And another turnover. Oregon can get even right here. And I can see why Marv Harshman would be a little bit anxious. Both teams have played man-to-man -man the whole way. Here's Murray. He loves that shot. We're tied at 50. Oh, that was an excellent play by Oregon. Excellent selection. That's why I was saying. I think they were having trouble with that interior passing. Murray's hit a couple shots from the outside. That's what they needed. Hit a few from the outside. Murray, a senior, is a good one to go to for a clutch basket. Murray has 10. His seasonal high is 13. Griffin, who's had a good ball game, misses for Washington. And now the Ducks can go in front with 6.53 to go. Seeley tried to get it to yeah. Murray. Brock had it. And Washington will get it back. I think that's one of Oregon's biggest problems is making that pass in there when it's really not It's not there, there. is it? No. Should not be made. 50-50. Six and a half to go. Don Vaughn gives the lead back to Washington. Five for Vaughn. Don Vaughn committed the foul. <laughs> and then he turns and heads straight for the bench. He knew he was coming out, yeah. and Lorenzo Romar now comes in and he's played. It's only the first foul on him. I think he knew he was coming out, so he thought, what the heck, I'm going to try to make a steal. When I knew someone was reported for me and my team got the ball, I'd put it up from anywhere. I didn't care. 52-50 Washington. It's, it's, not a, a, it's not the positive way to play, but when you are a player, you're always looking over there to see if there is some substitution reporting, and if it is, you want to know if it's for you or not, because you really want to stay out there in the game. You don't want someone to come in for you, ever. John Gregg gets it back inside the Clark, and it's tied again. Clark with six points all in the second half, 52 all, and we're at the six-minute mark. I think Peter Goodmanson's going to have to show some uh, initiative here offensively if he's going to stay in the game because he's certainly not helping him defensively. Clark is fronting him. Clark giving away about five inches. Goodmanson 7-2, Clark 6-9, and they're bumping inside. Frank into Goodmanson. Clark got a hand on him. Goodmanson rolled it in. Ten for Goodmanson today. 13's been his high this year against Seattle. Washington among the top 15 teams wow. in the country in defense against opponents. Put yeah, the ball up. That's pretty impressive statistic there. And Oregon, I don't think, has shot all that well today. Jerome Williams, tough shot. Had it down, wouldn't go. Follow won't go. And it comes out to Washington. Five minutes to play. Washington leading 54-52. Goodmanson. I think his shot might have been partially blocked. Yes, it was, and a rebound for Jerome Williams. Murray tried to force a pass through. Somebody kicked it, but who touched it last? I think it was the foot. So <laughs> Oregon will keep it. Number 45, James Woods. James Woods back in for Washington, and Peter Goodmanson will sit down. Washington has won 15 times, trying to get number 16 today, and they've got games left at USC and UCLA next week, and then home dates with Arizona and Arizona State. And as you heard Mike Lude, the athletic director of the Huskies, say at halftime, the NIT is in contact with the Washington administration. Park inside, player control foul on Mike, his fourth foul. 
16 fouls on the Ducks. Well, they got the ball in there in excellent position to Clark. It looked like he made himself a nice little move. I'm not really sure where I, I saw it. Yeah, I'm not sure I saw the offensive foul committed. Four fifteen to go, Jim Haney yelling, just give us an even break, that's all I ask, because he walks down yelling at Frank Buckowitz. Walker from outside, this is Your Craig. Your Went up for the rebound, but there's a foul called on Washington. Might be on Griffin. Yes, Andre Griffin picks up his.